ovarian cancer and endometrial cancer. So before we dive into the nitty gritties, it's really important that we understand the difference between somatic mutations and germline mutations and that, how that relates to cancer. So when we're talking about something called somatic mutations, these are mutations in our genetic information that is usually acquired. So what that means is it's not a mutation that you're born with, but over time you, you acquire this mutation. Okay, and typically these mutations are isolated to the tumor itself. So you only find those mutations in the tumor and essentially it's those mutations in those cells that cause that tumor to develop and that cause the cancer to happen. These types of mutations cannot be passed on to children, okay? But these mutations can lead to cancer. So if they disrupt cell function enough, then that tumor can then become cancerous as a result of those, of those mutations in that cell. So if you look at this picture that I've got here, where that little pink star is, so that's, for example, the site of where the tumor would be and the specific sporadic or somatic mutation is isolated there to that tumor. When we speak of germline mutations, these are the mutations we refer to when we're speaking about hereditary cancer syndromes. So these are specific mutations that are actually inherited. So you are born with these mutations. And as a result, this mutation occurs inside every single cell of the body, okay? So that means you would find this mutation in the tumor, for example, but you could also find it in other cells of the body. So for example, if we had to take a blood sample from somebody, you would see that mutation there as well. Okay, and these types of mutations can be passed on to children. And what these mutations do is typically they increase our, our susceptibility to develop cancer in our lifetime. Okay, so it's important that we make that distinction. And so throughout this talk, when we speak about hereditary cancer um, and we speak 